Hello everyone, back to you in today's video, going to have a look at where next week to 10 days. In today's video, this will take us pretty much through the um, first 10 days of September, uh, actually. So we're going into uh, autumn, of course, it's last day of uh, meteorological summer. Day. Of course, it's very questionable uh, about that. It's just useful when it comes to uh, divvying up these statistics, have a defined period. But um, the weather doesn't uh, stick to that uh, defined criteria by any means. So... Although meteorological uh, summer is the 1st of June to 31st of August and meteorological autumn is the 1st of September to 30th of November, um, the weather doesn't play by those rules. But nevertheless, we are at the last day of summer 2017. Uh, today, it's been a really odd summer, a very strange summer in uh, many ways. Um, and we're off into autumn tomorrow, so uh, this update will take you through the first 10 days of September and the first 10 days of autumn as well. But we're going to start off looking at what's going on in the uh, tropical Atlantic and Pacific Oceans in terms of uh, storms, though. So, um, we'll deal with the Pacific first of all. I uh, spoke about uh, this uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, this was um, tropical. I think tropical depression fourteen. Uh, now it has been named, so it's a tropical uh, storm, uh, and it's uh, tropical storm uh, Lydia, uh, and it's heading up towards that uh, southwestern uh, tip of Mexico. We can see where the National Hurricane Center is forecasting that to go. It's moving it up through that southwestern. Uh, portion of Mexico and then running it out into the Pacific Ocean by the time we get through to the early part of next week it's been downgraded from a storm to a depression that might bring some heavy rain into the southwestern uh, tip of uh, California otherwise it shouldn't have too many impacts on the uh, United States I don't think um, then of course we've got the uh, we've got the remains of Harvey, so this is now uh, downgraded to a, a depression uh, just here. Uh, so uh, the National Hurricane Center uh, has this now as tropical depression. Harvey, I think they've issued their last advisory about Harvey as it's moving up into the states, further into the states. It is losing the energy that, of course, it had when it was sitting in the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Nevertheless, this is still going to be producing a lot of very wet weather. So this is the rainfall forecast from uh, Tropical Depression Harvey. And um, so for some of these states, such as Tennessee, uh, also up in towards Kentucky, we're still talking about sort of six to ten inches, 6 to 10 inches of rain um, from a Tropical Depression Harvey, which for us in the UK, that will be a huge amount of rain to be falling in a uh, day or two. So although it is downgraded from, uh, as it was, a Category 4 hurricane, now to just a Tropical Depression, um, nevertheless, that is still packing a lot of rain, and no doubt there will be more flooding in some of those uh, central states of America in the um, coming day or so. And then all lies now really are uh, on events in the central part of the Atlantic Ocean. I'll take you back to uh, this chart where we can see we've got a new hurricane uh, which is, uh, or we've got a new storm, which is Storm Irma. That's our latest uh, name storm. It's Tropical Storm Irma. It is predicted by the National Hurricane Centre to reach hurricane status very shortly. And uh, I'll go back to this chart then, which is um, the uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Centre. So that is uh, Irma. is forecast to become a hurricane very shortly, just there. It'll carry on tracking over weekend through the tropical uh, central Atlantic Ocean, by the time you get through to the early part of next week, just here, it's been predicted to become a major hurricane. That's category, I think it's category three or above, but most forecasts take this to category four, possibly category five. That's where the National Hurricane Centre is predicting it to be by Tuesday. Um, so it's still away from uh, any populated areas, although it is beginning to head towards the Caribbean, the first Caribbean islands just there, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, by that point, is a major hurricane. So we're talking about category three, four or five. Have to wait and see how major it becomes. But I say most forecasts are taking this up to category four 
or Category 5 status. Then we'll have to see where it goes. It may uh, it may go into uh, the Caribbean. Of course, it might take that sort of route going up towards Florida. It might do something like that and go up to Bermuda. It might even go into the eastern seaboard of the United States. So uh, all bets are off then. I think it's too far away, really, to predict exactly where it's going to go. But it's certainly going to be a major hurricane by the time we get through to the early part of next week. The uh, latest GFS forecast uh, for Irma has it uh, just here uh, by the time we get through to the 8th of September, which is a week tomorrow, has it just there, um, which is sort of bearing down on the uh, Caribbean islands, uh, I say possibly a major uh, hurricane system by that point. And uh, actually the GFS runs um, uh, into the uh, southeastern part of America, actually hits the eastern seaboard, there it is on the 10th of September, hitting the eastern seaboard. That looks rather alarming, but bear in mind that's a very, very uh, long way off, so I wouldn't be, <coughs> excuse me again, I wouldn't be overly concerned about that. But obviously, if it came off, it would be uh, a very serious hit for um, the east coast of America. And then it runs up the eastern seaboard by the 11th into 12th of September. It's heading up the eastern seaboard, affecting parts of New York, for example, and moving up in towards uh, Canada as well. So a direct hit on the eastern coast of, uh, coast of states by uh, Hurricane Irma through um, by around day 10 and heading just beyond uh, day 10. Uh, ECWF, however, doesn't have Irma as far north, so it's very hard to make uh, make it out, actually. But I was uh, say that by um, the 6th of September, that is Irma just there, still in the central uh, part of the Atlantic Ocean, and Irma eventually uh, heading towards the uh, Caribbean. So at day 10, that's Irma just there in the Caribbean, possibly affecting some parts of Florida, but not going up the east coast of the state. So we have to wait and see where Irma is going to go, but uh, it is going to be a major feature. We'll be hearing a lot about it over the uh, next few days, particularly into next week as we start to pin down since that track. Right, coming back to the UK then, and uh, just to have a quick look at central England temperature. So uh, we've only got one day left, but visual to yesterday, we're at the, which is 30th of August, of course, we're at 16. Point zero, an anomaly of just 0 0.2 degrees above average. Um, so we had a cold night last night, which I think may knock uh, 0.1 of a degree off uh, for today. It's going to be a fairly cool day as well today. Um, and this is normally uh, corrected a little bit, but I normally shave around 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 of, uh, of a degree off. Uh, when you get through to the end of the month. So it is possible that we might actually come out ever so ever slightly cooler than average. I think we're going to come out somewhere around 15.7, 15.8, something like that. So it'll be touch and go whether we are ever slightly below average. Um, but I think basically say we've had an average uh, August this year, which is a little bit surprising because about 10 days ago, it looked nailed on to be cooler than average. But then we have that very warm weather over the uh, Bank Holiday weekend. This is how the uh, PSU, Penn State University, uh, 500 millibar height and normally flow charts are looking. We've got the ECMF here on the top, the GFS, have a look at it in a moment, it's on bottom, 500 millibars, 8,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure, moving around by a jet stream running above, blue extrapolates to low pressure and orange and red to high pressure. So the ECMF has us in an, in an Atlantic flow as we go through the uh, week 10 day period with the uh, jet stream coming through like that. However, we've got a lot of ridging to the south above average heights are to our south to our east as well so that's bringing a fair amount of dry weather actually albeit there is more of an atlantic influence up to the north and west by the way that is a uh, hurricane uh, irma just there in the Caribbean in the 7 to 10 day uh, time frame. This is how the uh, GFS is looking. So uh, we can see that uh, again, we've got this big area of above average heights here through the UK and going 
up to the north of the UK as well. Uh, we've got uh, below average heights around Greenland, Iceland, and uh, we're shoving the jet stream up to the north, although this is quite a weak ridge here that's to the north of us, so the danger of this is that we would very quickly push a weather front from that energy over Greenland down across the country, and that could bring uh, unsettled conditions as well. I think that is uh, Hurricane Irma on the eastern or heading into the east seaboard of states as we go through into that uh, seven to ten day uh, sort of time frame. The uh, GFS uh, ensemble is looking like this. The red line uh, is the upper air temperature, 30 upper air temperature. Cooler average at the moment, like to say that way, uh, at least to the end of the weekend. Then it starts to uh, warm up, so we're going to get more cool nights coming up over the next two or three nights. And then it begins to warm up later in the weekend and early next week. And then we're very close to the 30-year temperature average as we go through the first week of September. In terms of rainfall spikes we've got uh, some precipitation coming up. You wouldn't say it's overly wet but there's certainly risk of some showery interludes coming through. Um, and then early next week or through next week it looks like still risk of some showers at times. So I think the general trend through next week is a lot of dry weather but with some showers uh, that basically sums it up. The temperature anomaly for the next week going from the third 31st of August to the 8th of September comes out warmer than average and the precipitation anomaly is close to average a little bit more unsettled out to west a little bit wet than average actually for parts of the west but central and eastern areas are coming out a little bit uh, drier than average. These seem to be trending more unsettled though I have to say for this first week of September compared to what we're looking at a day or two ago. So I think we are at risk of some showers next week, even if it's not particularly wet. This Albert GFS is looking for Monday. We're bringing a trough, we're trying to bring a trough in across the country. That's probably going to die a death as it uh, moves in across the country Sunday into Monday. Then we get a ridge building from the south. That's going to pull up some quite warm air in the south early next week. But then this area of low pressure is developing out to the southwest. And this is pulling up quite a warm uh, southerly southeasterly wind as well. Um, so with that, that does look a little bit thundery as we go through to the middle part of that next week. By Thursday, uh, a week's time, that low pressure is sitting over top of the country, bringing showery conditions. Still quite mild. The air is still coming up from the south, so it's quite warm. That does look more showery through the middle and last stages of next week. That low pressure then starts to move away uh, to the south. We get another push of high pressure from the Azores high as we go through into uh, the second weekend of uh, September. This takes us to day 10, which is Sunday the 10th of September, when we've got this ridge here in the south. That's putting up some quite warm air from the southwest, although there is low pressure out to the northern and western part of the country in the Atlantic. And as we extend out beyond that, well, here comes uh, Irma by uh, Monday the 11th of September. There it is, heading up in towards Canada. Uh, and as we move out beyond that, we see it uh, moves into Newfoundland, then eventually gets caught up in the, jet, in the jet stream. So we've gone out way beyond day 10, by the way. By Thursday the 14th of September, that's Irma just there, or the remains, what's left of Irma. Uh, somewhere around Iceland. For us, actually, it's keeping this ridge from the Azores high close to the south, so it keeps it reasonably settled in the south. But by the end of the GFS run, 6 o'clock run of the GFS, we're bringing that system into the north of Scotland, bringing some gale force winds and probably some quite heavy rain to the north and west of the country as well. Very, very speculative, of course, what's going on beyond day 10. Uh, finally, just having a look at the uh, ECM US, so let's go back and then move forward. Here we go for um, Monday. We're bringing this wheat trough in across the country. That's going to fizzle out as it moves in from Sunday into Monday. Then we get this push of high pressure from Tuesday. But by Wednesday, we've got low pressure developing out to west. Again, that could be bringing something a bit thundery in I look at that and I think maybe a little bit on the thundery side around the middle part of next week. Just looks quite unsettled then from that Wednesday into Thursday. Then that low pressure moving out of the way going to the second weekend of September, which is Saturday the 9th, Sunday the 10th of September. We extend the ridge, we build the ridge up from the southwest, and that's turning mostly dry and quite warm there, actually, for the second weekend of September. That would be very pleasant indeed, although the north and the west of the country does look unsettled there uh, with some quite wet weather, I would have thought, and a fairly strong southwesterly wind. 
Now, obviously, all of this is impacted by what's going to happen with, uh, at the moment, Storm Irma, but very soon to become Hurricane Irma. And by the early part of next week, it will be Major Hurricane Irma. Where that storm is going to go is going to have a major impact on the weather patterns throughout the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, and particularly, of course, in the Atlantic, so for America and for Europe. So um, a lot of health warnings coming uh, with this uh, for next week particularly the latter stages of next week, in terms of what's going to happen. Just going to be a case of wait and see. I suspect we will get a fair amount of warm weather next week. It does look quite warm. We've probably got that thundery interlude around the middle part of the week, or it may be thundery around the middle part of the week. Then beyond that, I think we really are into the realm of uh, speculation as to where we go in the second half of next week and through that second weekend of September. Right, been a bit of an extended one uh, today, uh, so thanks very much for sticking with it, and thanks for watching. Uh, tomorrow we're doing JMA Friday, so having the monthly look ahead with Japanese and CFSB models. That's all for now, thanks for watching.